Hello, everybody, and welcome to a brief session on how to deploy the audio codes of virtual SVC in Azure. Uh, to perform this process, we're going to be utilizing Azure Marketplace to help with the automation and deployment of the virtual SVC into your Azure tenant. So to get started, what we'd like to do is head over to the Azure Marketplace and do a quick search for audio codes. Uh, once uh, the search results come up, you'll be able to select the Median Virtual Edition SBC uh, from the different uh, audio codes products listed uh, on Azure. So we're going to go ahead here and click Get It Now. That's going to bring us to a little pop-up here uh, that explains some of the details about the virtual SBC running in, S uh, in Azure. Uh, and what you'll notice is uh, there's reference to a solution template that uh, we're utilizing here. Uh, ultimately to uh, help with the deployment. So if we go ahead and hit the uh, the continue button, uh, that's going to redirect us to our Azure portal. Uh, I'm already logged in, so uh, that'll pop right back up here. Uh, but certainly worth, worth noting that uh, with this integration into Azure, uh, we have the ability to utilize a nice simplified wizard uh, to get this uh, virtual SPC up and running within your Azure tenant. So if we go ahead here, click uh, the Create button. Uh, what this is going to do is launch that wizard and uh, ultimately allow us to start that uh, configuration process uh, within, um, within your Azure tenant. So first things first, let's give our SBC a name. So I'm going to uh, just name this one Azure SBC Demo. Uh, what you'll see here is I'm utilizing actually all lowercase um, letters here. Uh, I've noticed some challenges with uh, uppercase letters later on in the process, so certainly keep that in mind. Uh, and then we're going to provide a, um, a username and password here uh, of Azure Demo Admin. Uh, this will be used uh, in the future when we're able to access the SBC uh, for authentication to get into the web GUI. Uh, then we're also going to give ourselves a nice secure password. Uh, that meets the credentials and requirements that Microsoft has put in place within Azure. And uh, the next step is uh, your subscription. So to obviously run these virtual machines in Azure, you'll require that subscription and, and there's sort of that pay as you go option. So you can select uh, the appropriate subscription. If you have multiple options in there, there's the drop down box that you'll be able to select that from. The next piece is a resource group. Uh, this is going to be something that uh, you can certainly utilize uh, existing uh, resource groups, um, but uh, most likely we're going to uh, create a new resource group. And in this case, I'm going to call it uh, AC Azure Demo, make it super simple. Lastly, you can select your location based on where you are geographically within uh, in the world there, and uh, ultimately get that uh, deploy closest to uh, your network. So we hit next and uh, move on to the second step within the uh, deployment wizard here. Uh, you'll see uh, the ability to um, configure the virtual machine size. Uh, and if we uh, select the option, there's going to be a few different options in there. But what you'll see is uh, two specific uh, options noted there uh, that allow us to uh, utilize what, uh, what we have tested at audio codes and uh, documented within the release notes. So you'll see uh, DS1 underscore V2, as well as DS2 underscore V2. And these are the two options that uh, we are currently supporting. Uh, the DS1 is supporting up to 250 sessions, the DS2 up to 600 sessions, and uh, certainly keep, uh, keep an eye on the release notes uh, as we uh, embark on this journey. Those could uh, potentially go up um, and uh, you know, certainly worth uh, you know, reviewing the release notes. And, these virtual machines may change in the future as things advance as well. Uh, one of the things uh, I did want to call it before hitting the OK button here is you have the ability to utilize a SBC cloud init file. Uh, file. And uh, this file will help with uh, some of the automation for additional configurations after the actual standing up of the SBC within Azure. Uh, so certainly uh, take a peek at uh, some of the documentation there if you're looking to utilize something like that to help with automation. Uh, of deploying the SBC, uh, certainly a, a very powerful way to simplify things uh, in the future as well. So we hit OK. Uh, we'll get to the third step, 
uh, in the wizard, which is uh, network settings. Uh, within the network settings, you have two options. You can either utilize a single network interface uh, or two network interfaces, depending on your environment and your requirements. Uh, for this particular example, we'll go ahead and select two network interfaces. And what you'll see here is the first thing we need to do is select a virtual network. Uh, you may already have these uh, configured uh, and were in place, uh, but uh, just keep in mind that uh, if you are utilizing two network interfaces on the SBC, uh, that virtual network is going to require two subnets. So I'm going to create a new one here. Uh, just keep the default naming con convention there. Uh, and then the next thing is uh, the subnet. And you'll see here two different subnets, um, and that'll be required for those two uh, different uh, physical interfaces. Uh, the public IP address information and DNS prefixes is automatically going to be populated uh, within the, uh, the wizard here. Certainly able to modify those if, uh, if needed, uh, but uh, certainly a uh, very simple automated uh, process there already. So I'm just going to go ahead and keep that as is. Uh, next, you'll see uh, as we get into step two, uh, excuse me, step four, uh, the, uh, the wizard's going to go through some validation processes, make sure that uh, everything's configured properly. And uh, as you can see very quickly and easily, uh, the validation has passed and we're able to move forward uh, with the, uh, the wizard. Uh, the last piece here, step five, uh, once this loads up, you'll see just some of the information on terms of use. And we're able to scroll down here to the bottom and hit this create button and now this is going to go off and actually uh, start the creation of the SBC within your azure tenant uh, it's going to stand up all those different roles that you have uh, in place uh, and certainly uh, make that process uh, super easy for you if we go up here on the notification side we'll see that uh, the deployment is in progress i'm going to go ahead and click that and once this loads up, what you'll see is all the different uh, components within Azure that are being utilized for, uh, for the SPC to be created. So this is running through um, the, the process of being deployed, and we'll give that some time to, to do so. So as you can see now, uh, that's, the screen here is showing that uh, your deployment is complete. So that means uh, our SPC is now uh, up and running. And if I head back up here to the notifications, I can see that the deployment has succeeded. I'm going to go ahead and select on that. And uh, this will come to the, uh, the, the AC Azure demo that I named uh, my SPC and give us all the relevant information related to uh, the SPC. Okay, so now that we have the uh, SPC up and running, I'm going to hop over to the web portal and I'm just going to log in real quick with the uh, username and password that uh, I configured earlier on within the, uh, the wizard. And once we log in here, obviously we'll see the uh, common SPC configuration uh, that we're all used to, uh, that looks the same for all the different audio codes, SPCs and gateways. Uh, one of the things I just did want to call out very briefly is if we head over here to the IP networking uh, tab, as well as the NAT translation uh, tab, what you'll see here is that uh, the configuration already uh, includes this rule, which is required for NATing between the Azure internal network and the public facing uh, internet connection. So this is going to help to alleviate uh, those issues as uh, you know, the traffic going in and out of the Azure environment uh, to the public network uh, allows you to uh, obviously easily communicate. So with that, I uh, wanted to thank you folks for your time today, and uh, certainly hope uh, this video was useful for everybody, and uh, looking forward to, uh, to chatting with everybody in the future. Thank you, and have a, have a nice day.